Good morning and welcome to our second Know and Go Friday series for February. We'll be talking about heart health. I'm Holly Brenner, the Director of Marketing and Public Relations for our system. I am appreciate very much that you made the time to be here this morning. I'm excited about our topic and about our presenters, so I hope you enjoy it as well. You know, as I was reflecting on this Know and Go Friday showcase and all of the advances, advancements that we've made in our heart care services here at Ignition Healthcare, I found this reflection to be particularly appropriate. And it really made me appreciate the healthy heart that I'm fortunate to have. And it made me realize just how important and how vulnerable that really is. So please consider this. Smaller than your fist, your heart will beat more than 60 times a minute for 70 years or more. 60 times a minute for 60 minutes is 3,600 times. What other physical thing can most of us do 3,600 times in one hour? Blink? Maybe. Tap our fingers on the desks? No. Jump up and down? Well, certainly not me. <laughs> but our heart keeps beating hour after hour, day after day. Every day it pumps almost 2,000 gallons of blood through our blood vessels. As a point of comparison, it takes almost five years to drink 2,000 gallons of water. So that's a lot of fluid. And unlike our knees or our back, our heart does all of this work without a single complaint. You never even know that it's there. Your heart is such a reliable, silent partner that sometimes we forget to care for it. Unfortunately for many, the first indication that their heart isn't functioning properly is a fatal heart attack. Almost 600,000 Americans die each year from heart disease, which is more than from cancer, strokes, accidents, chronic respiratory. That is a, that is a staggering statistic. And think about that for a moment. But the good news is that many of these heart-related ailments and concerns can really be avoided by paying close attention to our heart health. We were fortunate last month to have Dr. Heather Schmidt here along with our two wellness coordinators. Dr. Schmidt went into great detail in a real fun way, she was a dynamite presenter, about how, to, how we should incorporate more fruits and vegetables, fresh fruits and vegetables and whole grains and things like that into our diet to be a little more healthy every day. Every little thing makes a difference. And Jane and Chrissy were here to talk about the wellness tools that we have at our disposal as Ignition Associates. What a valuable resource those ladies are and the, and the other tools that we have available. So we're fortunate to have to be here and to have these, these resources. And I encourage all of you to use them as I'm trying to do that myself. And now I'd like to introduce Dr. Lilly. Dr. Lilly is a cardio, cardiothoracic surgeon with the Dale Michael Center for Heart Care and Freighter at the Medical College of Wisconsin. He will shed more light on what Agnesian Healthcare does to help, to help our community as it relates to their heart health. I'm going to talk about stuff that you all know and you've all seen, and I really appreciate you being here. I think the, this is a slide that uh, you're going to see. Uh, you know, I try to avoid looking at it, actually. I don't like looking at it myself, but I think the, there are two factors on this slide that I love, okay? First, I am a perfectionist, and I love the best, all right? And I think that's what we're trying to build here is truly the best the best care all the way around in terms of heart care that we can. And when you come to our operating room and you come to our intensive care unit and you're here with us, it is my firm belief that you're going to get the best care. And in the post-operative setting, in our clinics, and in our, um, uh, in our rehabilitation, uh, you're going to get the best care. And that is what I expect for you. Okay. The other thing I love is Mike Menser on here. And Mike, I'll tell you a little story, is a guy who came on uh, Easter uh, with an acute MI, uh, was very sick, uh, and uh, attempted intervention. The intervention could not be accomplished uh, and was taken emergently to the operating room by me and, you know, Mike left the hospital within three to five days, I think. I mean, was really, you know, easily swam through the whole process and, uh, and is a grateful member of the community. Many of you know him uh, and uh, has agreed to, you know, be with my ugly mug on something like this. Uh, so, I mean, this is it. And, and the thing I like about it is it's the best care right here, okay? So let's talk a little bit about it. So I am, I am actually employed uh, officially by the Medical College of Wisconsin and contracted up here. But I'm here. And I'm here 
24-7 most of the time, okay? Uh, and I'm always on call, and, and that's because uh, uh, I want to make sure my patients do well. Can you go to the next one? So, we got a big team, and, and I think this is the key. It's no longer, uh, and this is what Medicare and CMS and insurance companies are focusing on, multi-specialty approach to disease. And you're going to hear this from CMS, which is the, the uh, uh, administrative arm that, that uh, delivers Medicare dollars, that um, uh, you got to have a heart team. And what that team is composed of in this circumstance are there's the surgeon, the cardiologist, not just interventional, but all the cardiologists. Uh, we have uh, uh, an electrophysiology team that also incorporates uh, Dr. Roth uh, from the Freighter Medical College, uh, as well as nurse practitioners in that team. Uh, we got, uh, you know, it says cabbage team here, but really what's talking about is our operative component, which is huge. Many of you know them. We've got uh, nurses, we've got uh, surgical techs, we've got perfusionists, we've got, importantly, anesthesia, all working together. Okay, um, we got then after the fact is our clinic, both cardiology and cardiothoracic surgery. You're going to be seeing us, you're going to be interacting with Carrie and with my other members of the team, uh, Melissa, uh, uh, Dannard, who, hey Mel, why don't you stand up and just say hi. This is Mel, I don't know, Catherine Casperi went on to bigger and better things. Uh, and uh, many of you know her, and, and Melissa Danner is a PA that's taken over for us uh, in that position. So you've got a team. So you're going to meet all these people. These people are all going to be, you know, personalized, friendly, happy to help, and we want you to do well. Uh, and then, you know, in terms of cardiology, uh, we've got uh, uh, the whole cardiology team. And we'll go through some of those members. And then we have some cardiac support groups that are, that are people that have been through the process that know what it is to have their chest opened up or know what it is to have had a myocardial infarction or a heart attack and, uh, and are suffering with the consequences of that emotionally and are there, okay? So we've got this whole support structure that we really want to wrap around you and make sure that you do well. Go to the next slide. So, uh, this is a slide that just talks about the freighter connection, uh, and again, uh, you know, it's me, and I'm here, and I get support from some of my partners back home. Go to the next slide. The key is it's close to home. The key is it's people that you know, and, you know, people that we're going to be there to support you. Uh, the key we found in coronary uh, interventions, coronary acute coronary emergencies, that uh, the, the door to so-called balloon time, which means the time it takes between the beginning of your heart attack and that vessel begins to close, and the time that we open up that vessel and begin perfusing that heart muscle, uh, really does matter in terms of how much heart muscle you lose and in the end what kind of debility you're going to have. Um, you can have a small heart attack and in fact you know one of the best cures for for people that have chest pain so-called angina is for them to have a heart attack you know it's gone. That doesn't mean they can do what they want to do right? That doesn't mean that they can continue to jog or or even continue to lift a cup of coffee up and drink it without having chest pain or shortness of breath, or heart failure. And these are all consequences, not to mention sort of the severe consequences that we see. And so what we found again and again and again is we gotta get that vessel open, we gotta get that, the so-called door to balloon time, which means when you come to the emergency room with your heart attack, okay, and the time we get that vessel open, we monitor each one of those, we know what the door to balloon time is. Uh, and we look at it very carefully, and our cardiac, our, our uh, cardiac catheterization team takes great pride in that. And Colleen and the rest of her team, is Colleen here, do we have cardiac cath members? 
Who's here on the CAT team? I think they're busy today. But, but they are, you know, they're, they focus on it, we monitor it, it's a quality indicator for this institution. Because once that heart muscle's dead, it's dead. We can't do anything about it. Except, we can talk about heart replacement therapy. And that's and also where we're going. Go to the next slide. So who's the, who are the members of the team? And you guys know these people. Um, the, they have uh, Dr. Santa Cruz here on the left, Dr. Bowman, Dr. Bowman's back in the back, Dr. Bowman, and uh, 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 Dr. Diaz, Juan Diaz. And you see all the pictures that are around and we're currently in a cycle of uh, uh, advertisement. So unfortunately, there are gonna be some billboards and that sort of thing and my mug's been in the paper. Uh, the, but it's good for the hospital. So, uh, and then, by the way, to support the service, we're going to have a, uh, a minimally clothed calendar that's coming out. Uh, I think, uh, have you ever seen a mankini? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? So, <laughs> let's just say I've seen the pictures of Dr. Bowman in that mankini. <laughs> So we're going to have, you know, bottom line is these are the primary providers. Mary Kelm's picture's not up here. Mary Kelm is an essential component. Mary Kelm, say hi. And we, this is Mary. Everybody knows Mary. Uh, a critical component of our post-operative care and, and particularly our heart failure management, uh, which is, again, becoming a very crucial component financially for the hospital, is how we handle patients outpatient preventing them from coming back in heart failure after they've had their heart attack, after they've had, or as they're ongoing in their management of uh, their uh, heart disease. So all of these things wrap together, and there are so many of us that are working on a daily basis. Go to the next slide. So I think here's the key. Uh, is the team the multi-specialty component? And what I can tell you, you know, Many times, uh, patients come in, they have an acute problem. Uh, Dr. Santa Cruz, uh, 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 Dr. Diaz give me a call from the cath lab and say, hey, I got this problem. Uh, I may not necessarily be in the hospital, but believe it or not, we have a, um, a VPN set up, a virtual network that I can uh, pull up the cath films at my residence and say, hey, look at this, uh, I agree or I disagree with how we're going to manage this problem. And so we actually have a multi-specialty conference right there on the fly. And we say, oh, yeah, I think that's best managed with stents. Oh, yeah, I think that's best managed by surgery. You know, the patient obviously is, is educated and we move forward. And that's the key is, and that's the beauty of this place. And that's something that you guys ought to take great pride in, is that we have people that work together, people that are pulling on the same oars, people that are wanting to take care of patients that don't necessarily have uh, other outside forces pushing them in. You know, like you might at some private hospitals, like you might at big institutions that I won't even name down in Milwaukee, where, you know, if you don't produce, you're fired, right? Uh, now, because that can, like it or not, affect some of the decision making about what kind of care patients get. Sad, right? But it's true. At this little hospital, we're together. At this hospital, I'm part of the decision making, as is Dr., uh, as is all of us. And I think that's important. And you ought to take great pride in that. Cardiologists, interventional cardiologists. So what, what, one of the things you'll hear about is uh, stent therapy uh, and you know, so-called percutaneous intervention, uh, a critical component of how we do things, uh, invented by um, a guy by the name of Grunzig in the 1970s. He and his wife actually uh, made little balloons on catheters in their kitchen. Uh, and convinced uh, a hospital in Germany to uh, 
to allow them to do it, on, and they actually did it on a dentist. Uh, and uh, it was, uh, it worked, and suddenly there's this really profound inter, you know, medical intervention that's possible without big operations. So angioplasty, and then that has extended, that means blowing up a balloon inside a blood vessel that's diseased, and that's extended into things like putting little cages in there to keep those vessels open, uh, So, which began with metal stents that have now become coated with various uh, toxic substances uh, so that clots and things, or not clots, but uh, uh, the uh, uh, ingrowth of the abnormal tissue that led to the disease at the beginning can't happen again. And so this is sort of all changing, all a moving target. And it's certainly a profoundly important component of how heart care is delivered, all right? And then there's surgery, and surgery is something a little different. Go to the next slide. So what, what the surgeon does, you know, I mean, uh, most uh, uh, trained monkeys could do it, actually. I mean, I'm basically uh, a fancy plumber, okay? Not that monkeys and plumbers are the same. I didn't mean to imply that. But I'm saying it's some. What we, what I do is, uh, I, you know, if you're if you're trying to get to uh, North Fond du Lac, uh, you can either go up 41, or you can go around uh, 151 and come south some way. And so what I do is create 151. Does that make sense? Uh, in terms of heart. Uh, arteries. I and that's for just the coronary artery disease, which is a big component of what we do. And these are people that usually come in in heart attacks. There's a whole, whole spectrum of other things that we do. Uh, increasingly, we're getting populations of patients. Their their heart valves are becoming diseased. Uh, they are become you know they develop shortness of breath or other problems. Uh, we treat that by often replacing valves. Or in the case of mitral valves, we repair valves, so we use your own tissue. Um, we use all kinds of different valves. Uh, we do operations where we do two, three valves at the same time. Uh, we do operations where we uh, fix aneurysms in the chest or aortic dissections uh, uh, that can occur in the chest. Uh, and these are high-level cardiac procedures not done by many surgeons, okay? These are procedures that I do as a routine uh, that can be done here. And I think that's the key. Uh, it, it, you know, really, I, I can say with great confidence and, and uh, that we have a, an excellent operating room team. Ann Anders is back there. Hey, Ann, say hi. All right. And, uh, and Ann Dacey, who's the leader of the operating room. There you go. And all of these people have made it a, their goal to make it appropriate and make it good. And these, you know, when uh, Dr. Woodhull was here, I think that, you know, the, the expectations were a little different uh, in terms of the kind of cases that have been done. Meanwhile, patients have gotten sicker and sicker, and we've sort of extended indications as I've come, done, doing a lot of different kinds of cases and my teams that were here before me, boy, they just stepped to the plate and they're wonderful people, okay? And so you guys ought to all be grateful. I think it's been fantastic. Uh, the newest things that we've done here are things like minimally invasive surgery, uh, min, you know, through smaller incisions, the same operation. We've done the first surgery for atrial fibrillation in this hospital, which is a great thing because we have many patients that have atrial fibrillation. And uh, you know, with about 90% success rate, have taken patients that have had an irregular heart rhythm being on a poison like warfarin or coumadin, which is or rat poison, right? Being on that all of their you know for maybe years and years and years, done an operation where we reverse their atrial fibrillation, and within two three months taken them off the rat poison, uh, and you know that's a huge thing. Right? Not only making them feel better, okay. So uh, we've done those things. We've, I brought that technology here. Uh, it's pretty simple to do. And we've actually helped a lot of patients that way. Um, 
The other thing that we can do now is uh, if you extending into our intensive care unit where we have a, a intensivists uh, that are here helping me co-manage patients. Uh, you'll be meeting them if you come through the process with uh, of a heart surgery. Um, and you know we work very closely together. But the intensivists uh, sometimes get other patients with other problems like influenza or a, um, uh, trauma-induced ARDS or other big problems that they can't breathe. And we have the capability now to bypass their lungs and actually give them extra lungs, you know, sort of like dialysis for kidneys. Uh, uh, so we can do that here, okay? So it's all about saving lives, it's all about improving uh, healthcare delivery and making it so that you guys can get that stuff here without having to drive an hour and a half. Go to the next slide. So uh, one of the common things we do is coronary artery bypass grafting, so-called cabbage. Um, and you know we've got all these people that help me. Often we take vein from the leg, we take arteries from forearms, we take arteries from the inside of the chest, construct new arteries to the surface of the heart, the 151, you know, like we're talking about. Uh, the, uh, uh, we try very carefully to focus on giving you as many arterial grafts as we can because we're, the literature and, and studies that I've participated in have found that more arteries equals better survival. So if you're young, you're going to get as many arterial grafts as we can get you uh, that are going to stay open, you know, uh, uh, but again, it depends on the situation. So we use vein harvesting and Mel, uh, 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 Melissa Danner here, our PA, and Dave Erkowitz, who's not here today, um, both help in that regard, and what we'll do is often take vein with a couple small incisions, so you're not, you know, dealing with a long scar, and you can be on the beach in your bikini and not be so embarrassed, right? So we we uh, we do all these things to help help out uh, our patients. Go forward to the next slide. Cardiac rehabilitation, and I think this is critical. I, one of the things I've been very impressed with in this hospital is the, our physical therapy group, our occupational therapy group, the way that they step in uh, right at the beginning and are there helping our patients uh, learning the process. Our dietary group, uh, everybody working together, uh, making these patients move forward. Anybody here from PT, OT? Any, uh, I see. Dietary, raise your hand. There you go. So again, another component of the team. And this often translates into some patients need a little extra time in the hospital in an inpatient rehabilitation setting. And that's where our transitional care unit comes into play. Um, uh, and this is often before they get to outpatient cardiac rehabilitation. But our transitional care unit up on the sixth floor fantastic facility. They do a great job with our patients. Uh, and uh, TCU people, who do we have here? We've got, there we go. So another member of the team, okay? Uh, and something you guys, it's a great resource. Then once they get out of that transitional care unit setting, then we're talking about outpatient cardiac rehabilitation. You know, uh, our um, physical therapists working with the patients making sure that they're moving in a positive direction. Anybody here from cardiac rehab? Okay, they're not here today. So, so I think it, this happens both at um, uh, St. Agnes, but also we have service at, at Ripon and Waupon, so we can move it closer to the patient's home so they're not driving that 30 to 35 minutes or whatever it takes to get over to here, okay? Go to the next slide. Uh, cardiac support group, we've mentioned it briefly. Free support group for those touched by heart disease. Uh, meets third Monday of each month, 11.30 to one. Um, and Journeys, a health resource center, which is our online, um, uh, am I correct? That's what we are talking about there? Okay. And topic varies each month. So uh, our cardiac support, even beyond our rehab like we talked about. So again, 
wrapping our arms around these patients, owning them, caring for them, making sure that they do as well as they possibly can, offering you know real patient-centered, the best care possible. Not just care because it's care you might receive at a place like this, we're talking about the best care at a place like this, all right? Anybody have any questions? I think we're gonna stop there. Yeah? Do you do ablation, is that what you use? <laughs> For the atrial fibrillation, absolutely. And we can do those through little tiny incisions, we can do those as, a, as a, an adjunct to bigger operations, uh, but yeah, uh, we do them, um, those ablation procedures uh, for atrial fibrillation or other ventricular arrhythmias, um, uh, we, we work closely with Dr. Roth and uh, currently we have to send patients to Freighter in his, in his um, so that he can use that facility. I don't know, I know that we keep talking about whether we're gonna get a real ablation lab here, which is maybe gonna happen. But those ablations happen at Freighter right now, but Dr. Roth is the doctor who sees patients up here. So, so it's basically just a facility component. So he may do a catheter-based ablation through your groin for some arrhythmias, okay? Or there's also surgical ablation for failed catheter-based ablations. Or if you come to me with an abnormal heart rhythm and you need something else done, you're certainly gonna get an ablation procedure in the operating room. We're not going to ignore that atrial fibrillation because being on rat poison, uh, they call it poison for a reason, uh, is associated with a 1 to 2 percent per year chance that you're going to have a stroke. Uh, and it's an additive thing. Uh, and so if we can eliminate that atrial fibrillation, thereby eliminating the need for warfarin uh, or coumadin, then we potentially save lives down the road. Any other questions? Yes? When you talk about extra lungs, exactly what do you mean by well, that? Well, Dr. Lilly, can you just repeat those questions? First question was, uh, what is ablation? Um, and uh, uh, we talked about that. The second question is, what do you mean by extra lungs? Uh, we have an ability to um, oxygenate and ventilate lung, ventilate patient's blood with a circuit that sits outside their body. Uh, we call that extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. Uh, and there are a couple of ways of delivering that therapy. Um, the, um, what, it, what it does is it often works in parallel with a patient's lungs, or it can actually replace entirely the patient's lungs. Uh, and in some patients that are very sick, there have been recent studies that show, for instance, uh, we have this whole group of patients that have influenza A, and um, uh, I've done a number of these patients who have uh, progressed to the point of um, uh, not being able to oxygenate and ventilate because of uh, uh, influenza pneumonia. And uh, we've put those patients on this, uh, uh, op this thing, this ECMO, and you've taken patients that have a mortality rate approaching 100% because you can't oxygenate and ventilate them, and we're getting you know, uh, you know, 60 to 70% of those patients to live. Uh, so it's certainly an intensive therapy. It's certainly uh, still a very serious problem, but zero to 70%, I think all of us would accept that as, a potential, as, a, as good, you know. Any other questions? Why don't you go to the next slide? I'm not sure what we have. These slides have changed. Cardiac care reunion. I think this is important as well. It's coming up, right? What's the date? The 28th. And uh, we have it in the cafeteria here, and Janet Planet is going to be singing. I'm going to be speaking, so don't miss it. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, we do this every year as a way to bring together people that have had, uh, that have gone through this process. People that know keeping it the family-oriented, close-knit uh, uh, organization that it is, 
And taking uh, something that Dr. Woodhull did, for instance, to start this program, you know, with interventional cardiology, but start the heart uh, bypass program, uh, and seeing all of these patients through Dr. Woodhull, some of them that I've done, that are there, you know, happy, alive, and you know, talking about their experiences, I think is a very positive thing, and it makes makes me happy when I go there. So you know, it's a it's a wonderful thing to do for patients. Uh, next, uh, next slide. Okay, I think that's it. That's all I'm going to talk about. You guys have any other questions? Well, thank you for coming. Oh, are there any questions in Wapan, Shelley? Actually, there's one. Um, we really found this very interesting, Dr. Lilly, and you were mentioning your one guy who has to be available all the time. Are you in Fond du Lac all the time to make that happen? No, uh, I, I live uh, in Richfield uh, and I commute. Um, if there's a sick patient, uh, I wait in Fond du Lac. Um, but I'm here every day, uh, including most Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, so it's, uh, uh, if the rare circumstance that I get a weekend off or a vacation, uh, I'm covered by partners at Freighter. So there is, there is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, cardiac surgical coverage at this hospital. Uh, and I think that's important. Um, uh, you know, there have been studies looking at whether for interventional cardiology, do you actually have to have a heart surgeon on, on site? Um, and, you know, uh, there are studies that are a little bit mixed. Uh, I think that uh, I certainly wouldn't want to go to a hospital where I didn't have a backup system uh, if something bad happened. Uh, the reality is that if you go to the cath lab and you have something that can't be fixed, um, something that needs immediate surgical attention, it's going to take us about an hour to get all the team in, to get everything set up, to get the anesthesia there. Uh, and um, I mean that's the best we can do because we don't have a cardiac surgical team staying in house 24-7. Um, that's the best they can do at Freighter as well by the way. So uh, you know about an hour and within an hour I'm here easily uh, and seeing the patient and making sure things go forward. So while um, I'm not necessarily here all the time I am available. Any other Wapan questions? Now, anything in Ripon? No, we're good. All right. Well, thanks everybody for your support. Thanks for your care. And I think, you know, it's a wonderful place because of people like you. And I think the key is it's got to be good. That's what everybody has to say. It's got to be good. Because if it's not good, you know, we're not doing what's good for patients. And that's what we're here about, right? All right. Thank you. I get to pick the winner. Let's see, who was it that gave me the money so that... Uh... Fitbit. I, uh, let's see. Mary Cow. Oh, Mary. That was fixed. <laughs> I just picked it out. All right, thank you. Thanks everyone for being here this morning. Before you leave, I'd like to just draw your attention to a couple of things. Hopefully you all received the yellow card when you came in. That's, uh, we're looking for your feedback. We're really hoping to make this a forum that is valuable to you, that we're providing information that you feel like you really need and can benefit from. So your feedback is very much appreciated. We will take that very seriously to heart. We also just wanted to bring your attention to the February events calendar. If you could pick one of these up and put it anywhere your associates, your teams will see it. This is a, a this is a roadmap. This is what we're doing this month as it relates to Asian, Asian healthcare. And there are a lot of a lot of journeys classes on here, a lot of cardiac events. You'll see if you take a look to take a look at it. In case you didn't see Dr. Lilly in the paper, we have copies. So please take a look at that. He's right. He'll be on a billboard soon too. And um, drawing your attention to a, a, a new a golf enthusiast, it's a bone and joint health event that we have coming up. So these flyers are available too. And grab an apple, so that's one of your five today. Thanks for being here.